In the original 1960s movie, uh, In the Heat of the Night, where Sidney Poitier's character confronts um, an outspoken southern racist and deeply offends this southern racist, um, an interesting exchange takes place, an interesting change of roles takes place. Um, Sidney Poitier slaps this guy across the face. A black man in the Deep South in the early 1960s slaps a white man and a moneyed white man across the face. You didn't do that sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> now, let's look at it from the point of view of the various people involved. The fellow on the receiving end of the slap, who actually initiates the whole thing, he slaps Sidney Poitier first. He asks for it in a way. But in a way, both characters have been needling each other from the moment they meet. Um, but from the point of view of the white guy, the old white guy who has very old attitudes, what did it mean to be slapped across the face by a black man? What kind of a violation of his person took place? Um, if we could measure the damage and the humiliation and the shame and the hurt that that one slap visited upon this man, how great would that be? Compare that to the slap that he visited upon Sidney Poitier's character, an aristocratic white man slapping a black man. Well, isn't that just the way of things? You slap people, you slap black people when they get out of line. It's lucky I didn't do more. <clears throat> now look at it from the point of view of Sidney Poitier. I can imagine him throughout the entire exchange needling this southern bigot. And he did needle him. <laughs> they were needling each other. They were deliberately provoking each other and pushing each other's buttons. The white guy erupted first, but I can see Sidney Poitier's character going, oh, please lose it. Oh, please, please, please. And when it looked as though he was going to get the slap across the face, I can just see Sidney Poitier going, oh, please slap me across the face. I can't. I, 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 this would be perfect if you did that. Because then he would have an excuse to slap the white guy across the face. What does that say about both characters? Um, now let's say as well that the white guy loses his temper, loses his nerve, loses control of himself, just doesn't understand what he's doing and he just can't take the provocations anymore. He slaps Sidney Poitier across the face. Sidney Poitier, of course, slaps him across the face. Can we imagine Sidney Poitier's character really enjoying this? Like, I mean really enjoying it. Enjoying it almost sadistically. Enjoying it almost sordidly. I get to slap a white guy across the face and there's not a goddamn thing he can do about it. I'm rubbing his nose in the fact that everything has changed irrevocably and there's absolutely nothing he can do about it. We see the humanity in the white guy. His imperfections mean that he's provoked in his way of think thinking beyond all endurance. And he can't do anything else but strike at the black man 
who is insulting him or who is provoking him. It was a stupid thing to do, an extremely stupid thing to do, but he's only a human being. And human beings have stupid ideas and stupid weaknesses. Poitier's character is a human being too. There was a temptation at the time when making movies like this to show black people as better than human. Maybe Poitier's character got a real rush out of slapping that SOB across the face. Would you blame him? I wouldn't. Would you praise him for it? I wouldn't say that that was part of his better nature. I would say that's how Poitier's character was corrupted by the power relationship as surely as the white guy was corrupted by the power relationship, or at least the power relationship that existed in the recent past. Slavery and skewed power relationships corrupt everybody. Everybody involved. We have a part of our character that likes to coerce people, that likes to exert power. It's part of us. It's part of our very nature. Slavery has the effect of formalizing an absolute power relationship. In other words, it It's a type of institution that caters to or provides for a fundamental aspect of humanity, which is the desire to have absolute power over other human beings. The master has a difficult time withstanding that temptation because of his humanity but we can't forgive him for it. He's a bad person because he fell prey to a temptation that he shouldn't have had, but which we all really have. Um, and by the same token, the corruption would have worked the other way too in that it bred in Poitier's character a desire to humiliate and a desire to rub people's noses in their newfound impotence, their newfound inability to act upon the power that they once had, which is, in a sense, power as well. See, Sidney Poitier seems to be saying, you can slap me across the face, and I've just had somebody slap me across the face. I can slap you across the face, and I have violated you in the most profound manner possible. It is entirely possible that you're going to go into your back shed, take out your gun at this point, and either kill me or perhaps kill yourself because you simply can't face the new world that you live in, where you can't do that to black people anymore. Who's the real sort of victim in all of this? I'd say everybody is the victim in all that. Maybe we shouldn't have the desire for power, but we have it. Maybe we shouldn't have the desire for revenge, but we have it. Um... What would any of us do if we knew with 100% certainty that we would not get caught? Even more, what would we do if what we were doing was legal, i.e. own slaves? Slavery corrupts everybody. And I think 
that to see it clearly we have to see the way in which it can corrupt the masters. We know how it corrupts the slaves. It, it's aimed at destroying their very humanity. But the corruption visited upon the slave owner is far more insidious and in many ways it renders him far more vulnerable. It fills him with fear of his slaves. It fills him with a sense of the backhand sort of power that the slaves have. That he actually has to maintain over them or else they will then exert the power over him. It so corrupts the owner that something as simple as a slap across the face amounts to the equivalent, at least the emotional and psychological equivalent, of a rape. Sidney Poitier, in a way, raped that guy in the slap scene. I'm not asking anyone to feel sorry for the white guy who was raped, but I think we have to see the dynamics of slavery for what they are. Otherwise, uh, we underestimate the forces that militate towards the, um, I guess, the uh, constant impetus to reinstate something along the lines of slavery. the desire to have that kind of power is part of what makes us humans. And the desire to have a set of standards applied to other people that don't apply to us is human as well. Um, we can say that that white guy deserved what he got you can say that too bad, just suck it up if you got slapped across the face by a black man, welcome to the brave new world. We might even say, maybe we ought to sue your butt off because of the ways in which you got your nice big estate, made all that money. I'm not going to get into that. But I don't think we can say that that was an evil man. And that to me makes all the difference in the world.